arrival here. How have you tried to work to build a little rapport with Carl early on in this as you're kind of yeah, navigating? Yeah, you know, you don't want to force it. It's got to yeah. be organic. Um, I, I came from somewhere where I was there for so long. Those things were so natural. So I don't want to come in um, and try to be too aggressive. That's to just happen naturally. We've talked a ton. We talked a ton prior to some of the moves we made. Um, and just now that he's back from his European jaunt, you know, <laughs> yeah, right. can, um, you know, go grab a grab a burger and just talk shop and talk about his family, talk about things he cares about. So I think it'll happen organically. I didn't want to come in here and um, try to recruit relationships. I think yeah. that's the that's not a, um, the right way to kind of develop organically. In terms of having just like the foundation of a star player locked in for long term, and I mean Rudy's got a long contract now too, and Ant's gonna be here for a while. What does that do for just the organization to have that stability underneath all yeah, of this? Yeah, it's it's wonderful, and we're very fortunate. Again, I think you asked the question down there. Was the foregone conclusion for Carl? He's seen so much. Uh, you know, he's seen a he's seen a lot of tough days. So it was so exciting to hear how excited he was about Finchie and his teammates and how how willing he was to quickly get this done. Um, but organizations like ours to have continuity and have elite talent who are locked up contractually and who want to be here. Um, it's, it's pretty rare to see um, you know, a non-glamour market have, have guys like that who are, um, are locked up. And again, there's an overwhelming sense of just uh, excitement about this season. I was just on the phone with D'Lo for a long time. He's so fired up. Um, so it's neat. It's, uh, this, these, these guys deserve it. The city deserves it. The fans deserve it. And, uh, fingers crossed, Nick got a chance to be pretty good. Did you write down what Carl says about Minnesota as like your pitch to other players then? Carl was good. I think the mayor better watch out. <laughs> um, no, he, he's told me the same thing as I've talked to a bunch of you guys off record. Um, you know, the basketball parts, you know, just put a different polo shirt on and t shirt. It's the same job for me. But in moving your family here, there's always some uh, trepidation in leaving a place you really enjoyed. And the over overwhelming sense of civic pride here is, is being consistent. At first I thought it was just a sales pitch, but um, every restaurant I go to, every you know, bar I go to, people love living here. So, And, and Carl has told me from the jump, like, you're going to love living in Minnesota. Uh, the winters are overrated. I'll, 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 I'm not excited to find out if that's factual or not, <laughs> but it'll be fine. But he really loves Minnesota, um, and he's been consistent in that message to me and my family. So. Yeah, I, I think um, we're pretty fired up, and we're fired up because of guys like Carl who really enjoy calling this place home. Was it tough to give him the fifth-year player option? I think what when you have when you achieve these extremely difficult benchmarks, I don't think there should be much negotiation. It's, you know, one of the tens or twenties. Um, you know, it's not easy to to qualify for what Carl qualified for. And again, the 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 fact that he's so enthusiastic about this organization after seeing so many ups and downs. You know, we we're just happy to get done. Having a versatile big man as one of the foundations of your team, this is ongoing experience for you. How much does it make a difference in terms of when you're starting to build a team, or in your case here, you know, embedding a team? Well, Carl is so uniquely gifted, he makes it hard because he's really a 5 4, 4 5. I, I, he's a 4 and a half. Uh, offensively, there's nothing he can't do. He's probably the best shooting big in the world. I think he's a, a grossly underrated passer. Uh, you know, he's played with bigs in the past in college, Willie Collie Stein, early in his career with Taj and Gorgie. Uh, so there's nothing he really can't do on that end. And with uh, what we tried to identify was guys that could both help help him and protect him. Uh, so when, when you have that unique skill set and you combine it with a guy like Rudy, it's, it's going to make it tough on the opponent. Uh, you know, we're going to be different kind of zag when a lot of teams are, are zigging right now, but um, you know we're okay with being different. We have a, an unbelievably creative coach, and um, Carl's versatility just allows you to do so many things. There's nothing you can't do with basketball for. What were his questions when he found out about this to you in terms of how he, he perceived you matching him and Rudy up? Well, you know, I talked to him a bunch prior to the trade, and um, to be honest with you, I forgot about him playing with big to big in uh, Kentucky, and he, he raved about his ability to be a high post passer, and he raved about, uh, <laughs> um, and you talked about the battles that he had with Rudy and how much respect he had for Rudy, and how much winning matters to Rudy, and how much winning they've enjoyed in, in Utah with you know, kind of Rudy leading the charge. So he, he's he's such a good teammate. He said, I mean, he doesn't know if you ask him if he's a fighter for it. He just knows he's a basketball player. So um, his excitement level certainly spurred our excitement level, and eventually without you know, 
his blessing, it would have been hard to get a uh, deal done, but he was super excited. You mentioned, you, mentioned Carl, you mentioned Carl's enthusiasm to be here, and with you building a new culture, just how much easier does it make the job for you and for, and for Finch when you have someone with Car Carl's leadership ability and leadership qualities to you know, be that guy in the locker room? Yeah, I mean, I, have, I haven't won at the highest level. I've never been in the finals and won a championship, so places that we're talking about, I've never been there, so I can't speak with any real authority, but I can speak with, with uh, a pretty good amount of confidence. If you don't have happy employees or colleagues, employees among colleagues, then it's hard to be successful. It doesn't matter if you're trying to win basketball games or if you're laying bricks. So it's it's um, unrealistic to expect 15 people to be happy. It's not all going to play. But your key guys have to want to be here, have to be bought in fully to the coach and the system, the organization, and our key guys are all in. So that gives you a puncher's chance. You combine that with elite talent and a heck of a coach, and kind of like where we are. Tim, you didn't get a chance to talk about Brandon and Austin that now being a part of the team. What went into bringing that man in? How excited you have both those guys? Now those guys are pros. Uh, they have so much experience. You know, Bryn, uh, they won a championship a couple years ago, so he can speak about what it's like to, to kind of raise a trophy. I think Austin's one of the uh, elite defenders in our league. He's a guy that has, uh, ha has played big roles for good teams for a long time. Uh, both, both those guys are adults, and uh, they're tough. And they bring playoff experience, which should help uh, you know, complement a young roster that's kind of still in the playoffs. It's also it's championship or bust now. Are you good with that? <laughs> Listen, I, I, I'm not a zero sum guy. So, no, there's, um, you know, I, I think our goal is to, you know, be at the table. Our goal is to be a home court playoff team. Um, and when we get there, how we get there, you know, we got to be lucky, we have to be healthy. Um, but I think when you're a home court playoff team, then you give yourself a chance to advance. Once you advance, it's matchups, it's health. Are you playing the hot team? Are you playing a team that's missing a player here and there? Um, but we're, we're hopeful that our foundation will allow us to be, um, that's a viable role, a viable goal, excuse me. You know, it, in years past, I don't know if we could look at ourselves in the mirror and say we, sh we have a chance to be a home court playoff team. So I think once you get there, you kind of throw the dice and see what happens. But um, I I'm not all or nothing, guys. It's a tough way to live life. Are you done now for the summer? Uh, I still got to move. Uh, I wish, um, <laughs> you know, the moving trucks come soon. Um, I don't know. I mean, you never know. I mean, you, we, we still got a couple of roster spots we're toying around with. We're uh, trying to get a couple guys done. Um, you know, there's, you never know how, when those calls come. I mean, the, you know, the, the Rudy thing happened fairly quickly. Um, you know, but we like where we are. We think we have, when you look at our roster, we think we have pieces that protect, complement, augment each other. We think our two deep is um, is pretty impressive, um, and again we have um, some elite elite guys relative to um, their position, and uh, we have a fantastic coaching staff. So we'd be excited to go into the training camp with the roster as this.